Hi guys, my name is Kumit and Rishabh and we are here to talk about Interior New Year Budget 2019 that was published on 1st of 2019. But before talking about the budget, we would like to tell you give you some tips that will help you to avoid the two questions that are asked about the budget in your NPIs. So the first and foremost thing uh, you have to take care is you have to critically analyze the budget which is being published and then do not take any political your personal political stance whichever you are you are having. And then uh, pause and uh, structure your answer before answering them. That will show that you are a patient person. And then uh, do know about the basic macroeconomic terms, which we will be explaining to you, but you can go through them before going to the interview. So, whenever you talk about the budget, you need to first look at the revised estimates of the previous budget. This revised estimates tell you how did the government perform on the previous budget. So, when you look about the revenue, the receipts of budget for 2018-19, it was estimated to be around 17 lakhs, 80,000, 20 lakh, 80,000. But then uh, the revised estimate shows you a uh, revenue of 17 lakhs, 84,000. Over a year, the change, over a year, you will see a minor change. But when you look into the bifurcations of the budget, there are a lot of major changes. So when you look at the estimates of GST tax, there is a difference of 1 lakh crore, deficit of 1 lakh crore, you can see. So, estimated budget was about 7 lakh 14,000 crores, but the revised estimates are about 6 lakh 43,000. So, this revised estimates are actually what are the expected income that the government will have after performing for the 9 months in the financial year. This revised estimates are also not the actual income of the government, but they tell you what are expected for the 9 months. Now, there has been deficit of 1 lakh crore in GST. But when you look at the corporate tax, there has been a surplus of 3,000 crores. Apart from this, there are various PSUs uh, and other public sector enterprises. Overall, the government has earned more than 50 55,000 crores. So, overall, the income is more. But when you look at GST part, the income has been more. When you look at the spending culture, so spending culture has increased and it is never uh, been within the budgetary level. So, if you now look at the 2019 figures, 2019-2020. So estimated revenue generated through taxes are around 17 lakh crores, and uh, apart from taxes, generated through revenue. So revenue is then the income they get from the uh, PACs or PSUs. So PACs are railways, then PSUs you can count on BPCL, HPCL, and other government industries. Uh, this is about 7 lakh 27,000 crores. So this sum comes up to around 24 lakh crores. But the expenditure that government has is about 37 lakh crores. So the difference between this is called uh, deficit. So there are basically three types of three types of deficits. One is fiscal deficit, the other one is uh, revenue deficit, and the third one is revenue uh, uh, primary deficit. So the fiscal deficit is the difference between the expenditure and the income of the government. Uh, revenue deficit is the uh, budgeted income and the actual income of the government, and primary deficit is the part of the fiscal deficit without the interest paid by the government from the borrowings. So, uh, we will go on uh, explaining the sector one by one. Uh, the first one will be agriculture sector. Uh, even yes. the yes. So, when you talk about the agriculture sector, the major announcement that the government had was a uh, basic income of 6,000 to be informed by the land less than 2 hectares. So, this income will be provided in three installments of 2,000 bits and will be implemented from December 2018 itself. The first installment is given in the previous budget itself because like, this will help them to buy the crops in the fertilizer before the harvesting season, before, as soon as the harvesting season is completed. But this spending has actually increased the overall total expenditure on agriculture by 73% compared to the previous year. So uh, basically uh, that was the major announcement and the other announcement was government has announced to 2% interest uh, subsidy from the uh, farmers affected by uh, natural disasters and 3% interest additional interest subsidy for the uh, farmers who are uh, repaying the loans, timely, uh, timely repayment of the loans. This is because they want to, uh, they do not want to actually pay off the loan, they want to help the banks as well as the farmers who are willing to pay the loans. So this will incentivize the farmers to pay the loans. And the science can, like if you want to think more why this is being done, they want to make the agriculture sector of the of our country more efficient and they want to bring farmers out of agriculture because uh, the standard of living uh, is uh, 
penetrating uh, lesser in the agriculture sector. So when people come from agriculture sector to manufacturing and industrial sector, their standard of living increases. So they will uh, make the sector efficient and then they bring out the farmers from the agriculture sector. So the median household income of uh, farmers in India according to 2012 uh, 13 uh, economic survey is 1600 per month. So the additional 500 will give them it will be around 2100 per month. So that is uh, better than what they are having right now. Uh, and formal, uh, the lowest farmers usually take will be from uh, lower strata of the uh, society. Uh, farmers take it from informal institute, financial institution. So the loan waiver does not make any sense here because the from loan waiver, loan waiver scheme, actually the farmers who are privileged farmers would get benefited from that. So like incentivize uh, making uh, them to pay uh, loans through interest subsidy would help them actually. So the next uh, sector we will be taking is uh, MSMEs. So in MSMEs similar like similar to the agriculture sector, they are uh, MSMEs registered under GSD uh, and which are having uh, one loans up to one crore. They are given subsidy interest subsidy of two percent. This will uh, this will make the MSMEs come into formal economy since they are registered into GSD. And then it will help the uh, it will uh, actually uh, Mudra Aitna schemes, uh, Mudra Aitna schemes are uh, creating more NPAs. So, but uh, when they give uh, interest subsidy of 2%, people who have taken Mudra Aitna will be uh, repaying the loans. And uh, sector uh, sourcing, government will source, uh, source product, uh, goods and services from MSME up to uh, 25%. And 3% would be definitely taken from the uh, SMEs uh, which are set up by women. This is because 75% uh, of the beneficiaries of Udra Yajnas are women. So they will in turn help the women by sourcing from the such SMEs. So the next sector will be taken by Kurovi. Now, another major announcement uh, was they have cleared HV and animal husbandry with agriculture. So they have also the professional uh, who are practicing fishery and animal husbandry, they have been taken given an incentive of 2% of interest on the loan and also a timely repayment of their EMR, they are given an additional exemption of 3%. Apart from this, now moving on towards the uh, personal tax or income tax. So, income tax, as of now, the slabs and the rates have remained same as continued from 2018 to 2019 uh, 2019-20. But there has been a proposed uh, change in the slab which is of rebate uh, of income tax up to 5 lakh. But you need to notice one thing that there is a difference between rebate and exemption and exemption from the tax. So what is a rebate? Rebate is actually if you earn up to 5 lakhs, you are not taxable. If your income, like your income is taxable income is below 5 lakhs, or like or like 18 or you are not taxable. But if your uh, taxable income is around 8 lakhs, in this case only 2.5 lakh is exempted from your taxable income. And about 2.5 lakhs you need to pay taxes. So like 2.5 lakhs, 2.5 lakhs, 5 percent tax, 5 lakhs to 8 lakhs, again 20 percent tax is what yeah. tax is. 10 and 20 percent tax is what you are likely to pay. This was the announcement. Now when you look at this, uh, apart from this, but uh, there are many deductions given in the uh, taxable income. So 50,000 is the standard deduction that is grown from which was 40,000 last year, increased by 10,000 for this year. 2 lakhs is on the on interest and uh, so what so does the interest rate? So what this is making is actually we are missing the fiscal deficit target every year. This is the second consecutive year where the government has missed its fiscal deficit target. Last year the fiscal deficit target was 3.2 percent, but it was actually 3.3 percent. This year the fiscal deficit target was 3.3 percent, but it is actually 3.4 percent. But the uh, end goal of reaching fiscal deficit target of 3% by 2021, uh, 2021 year is remains same, which is actually practically not possible since our expenditures are increasing, but our source of income from the government remains same. According to uh, Swaminathan Iyer, a columnist on Economic Times, he says actually we should have reached fiscal deficit of target of 3% by the year 2018. So uh, both the governments, uh, like UP and NDA governments, have missed the tar fiscal deficit target and it is being postponed to 2021 now. And this will, uh, like, this budget is populist in nature. It is stimulate, it will stimulate the growth. So, uh, it is unlikely that RBI will cut the interest rate, which RBI might have done uh, had there been not populist uh, budget. 
so it will increase the demand uh, demand and consumption by the middle class and the lower middle class people in the rural as well as urban area what what we need to uh, see, see here is 60000 farmers will be benefited by the uh, 3000 rupees uh, 6000 rupees uh, basic income uh, given by the government and income limit uh, income tax limit but you will be benefited by urban 60000 uh, farmers will benefit 60,000 farmers, 60, uh, 60, 60 crores of farmers will uh, benefit from 75,000 uh, expenditure that is uh, allocated for that universal basic income. That will become uh, 1,250 rupees, but the income tax rebate is 12,500 rupees. So we can see that urban uh, citizens are benefited 10 times more than the rural citizens. So uh, what we have seen is till now, uh, rural, rural sectors and Rural sector and uh, rural and urban places. Now we will move on to the uh, real estate. Real estate has been uh, ignored since demonetization and GST, but now they are making some changes in the real estate sector. Like they have removed the tax on the second second uh, owned house. So there is no tax on the house which is the second owned house, and you can also there is also no tax on the uh, capital gain on the uh, real estate property which we have sold. So we can buy the uh, property even after. Uh, in the, without paying any tax. So this will boost for the real estate sector. Uh, now we have looked about what all uh, the uh, announcements they have made. What they have not made is, uh, youngsters, uh, there is no scheme for any use of the country and then uh, job for job creation there are no much uh, extra announcements and then uh, for example uh, the budget allocated for, allocated for IIMs and other higher education institutions has 